<clears throat> okay, thank you guys for being here. Um, man, another night in the Big 12. Big 12 stuff, I tell you, uh, gives Coach Self and his team a lot of credit. Um, we, need to, we, we knew we were going to get their best game tonight, uh, coming off a tough loss over to Iowa State, and, and uh, especially in particular from their supporting cast. Uh, Jalen Wilson's had a great year all, all year. You know, it's really hard to shut him down. And you look at the box score, and he has two points. And, uh, you know, he's had an MVP-type kind of year. Uh, but give, give all those other guys credit. They came in, and they played at a very high level. And uh, we, we knew that was going was gonna to be the case, and we are going to have to deal with that coming in this building. Uh, we knew we were going to have to come in here and try to take care of the basketball and try to defend at a high level. Uh, but, but again, I'll give my guys a lot of credit, too. We didn't get off to the kind of start we wanted to uh, uh, in this game. But in the second half, we came out, we buckled down, we put ourselves in position to be in position uh, to, to have an opportunity to win this game tonight. And, uh, um, you know, we came a little short in, in, in a number of different areas. But uh, uh, give Coach Self and his team a lot of credit. Well, I mean, you know, again, Kurt, I mean, obviously we didn't have our best game tonight. You know, we look up, we didn't have our best game in the first half, and we're down seven. You know, we are probably one of the worst halves that we've had all year long, and we're down seven on the road, top ten team. Okay, so, you know, they, they give them a credit again. They, they had a mentality where they were going to attack downhill. They got to the basket, and uh, they scored baskets, you know. And, again, we didn't, we didn't play the type of defense that we're, we've been playing over the last couple of games uh, to start the ball game, but uh, – uh, again, you know, we'll live another day, man. You're not going to play perfect. I tell, I tell our guys that all the time. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we'll have another opportunity to come back and, and go out better. Hey, Rodney, I know you guys tied it up in, in the second half, and I think it was one or two points a few times. Um, how frustrating is it to get that close and then and just kind of kept pulling away throughout the rest of the game? Well, again, I thought we had great execution coming out of the huddle. I think uh, out, of, out of halftime, I think we went on an 8-1 run to come out. Uh, we didn't give up second chance points. We took better care of the basketball, uh, and uh, as a result of that, we were we were in position to get things done. Uh, and to Kurt's point, we got to the paint. You know, we put the ball in the post and uh, made them have to guard us. And uh, um, you know, you had a whole different ball game. Um, but but again, it was their night tonight in terms of what they got done. And uh, um, you know, you keep this game with you for one night and uh, you move on. We'll have another great challenge coming on Saturday against a good West Virginia team that's, that's playing better right now. I've done that all year. I mean, that was preparation for that. We were prepared for the switching. Uh, it wasn't anything we weren't expecting in the game. Um, and, and we knew when they did switch, you know, KJ's a good sit-down defender. You know, you, you know, you think a guard can take him off the bounce. He's really, at the end of the day, a big wing himself. He's not really a big guy. So, you know, in essence, they're playing, they're playing four, four, uh, four smaller players out there anyway. So uh, we, knew, we knew they were going to do that to, to, uh, in, in, in the, during the game. You dug a hole in the first half again and came out strong in the second half. It's, do you need to give your second half pep talk of the – Pre-game or? No, I think I got. I, I think our guys were ready to play. I think uh, you know, in particular, maybe even the last two games, we've been really excited about playing. And I think, you know, you you, you know, you got to come out and sell into the game a little bit. And it took us a little bit longer to do that uh, tonight than we have. But uh, I thought we closed the half, you know, uh, on a good note defensively and offensively. I mean, it's a two-possession almost game at halftime, seven points. We've been in worse shape you know, uh, throughout the course of the year. So we, we've been there. We, no, there was no panic with us uh, in terms of where we were at halftime. We knew we could play a whole lot better. We didn't, we didn't, play, we didn't play as well as we were capable of playing, obviously, and taking care of the basketball. But, but uh, there's no quit over in that locker room over there, man. It's a lot of fight over there. It's a lot of guys that want to do well. It's a lot of guys that are excited about the remainder of this season. And, uh, you know, tonight wasn't our night. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Dewan Harris's play, just aggression, scoring the ball, and just kind of how he set the tone for KU early? Yeah, when he plays the way he played tonight, you know, anytime he has like nine, ten points in a game and he's aggressive trying to score the ball, uh, it makes their team a lot better, um, you know, than when he's not as aggressive. You know, he scored two points. If he scored two points in the game tonight, it's probably an advantage for us, you know. But uh, when he's aggressive and playing really good and in, in pick and roll and trying to get downhill, uh, in terms of trying to get something for himself or for a teammate, uh, it really puts a lot of pressure on the opposing team. Who's your last one? Nick, go ahead. Yeah, Rodney, I know for, for Tyrese, it was a little bit of a tough game offensively. Um, what did you see from him? Maybe 
I mean, Nick, at the end of the day, you know, Tyrese is going to be, you know, a steady guy for us in terms of, you know, we don't need Tyrese to try to go win the game for us. Tyrese is the point guard, and point guard's jobs are to make other guys around him better. I thought he really tried to guard hard in the second half. Uh, I thought he made some really good decisions in terms of trying to be aggressive, trying to attack the basket as well and create for his teammates. But at the end of the day, a point guard's job is to, to run the team, make other guys around him better, and at the end of the day, win games. That's that's what that's where you measure it as a point guard. So, you know, I don't get caught up in how much Terry scores. You know, if he scores, then that's great for us. But, but uh, just being a floor general and uh, and a guy that sits down and brings a defensive presence to us, that's enough for us to win games in this league and and win this league. Couple last ones, Kurt. Go ahead. Ron, do you remember the sequence where Dylan Mitchell swatted the rebound instead of grabbing it, and then Greg would hit the three, and then I think they got a dunk at Stephen and a dunk at. Well, it's ebb and flow of games. I mean, it's a broken play. I thought Dylan Mitchell was trying to – he did a great job. We call him Pender's Tips. He did a great job of really trying to give us a second-chance opportunity. Uh, didn't break our way. It broke their way, you know, and uh, give them credit. Not only did it break their way, they made a basket. They capitalized on it. So, you know, no fault in the effort there. You know, I thought, again, our team showed a lot of effort, a lot of fight, and uh, I'm proud of our guys in terms of – coming here and competing at a high level. And uh, again, we'll keep this with us for one night and we'll move on and be prepared to uh, to play a really good challenging team at home in West Virginia. On your right front. How would you assess the way Grady Dick played tonight and what did you guys try to do against him defensively? Well, again, he's one of those guys that Coach Seth called out the other day in terms of supporting cast that had to play better. Uh, we knew, he, you know, he's a, he's a talented young player that can score the basketball. Uh, when they win, he makes two to three threes a game. You know, and uh, he was an aggressive scorer tonight. He came out early from the very beginning and, and tried to set the tone in terms of scoring the basketball, and uh, uh, he played well. Um, you know, the thing that you're going to do with those kind of guys, you're just going to try to limit their, their touches and, uh, and then make him guard on the other end of the floor. And I thought we did that too. We made it difficult for him too on the other, other end of the floor. He had tough matchups guarding Timmy Allen as well. So, uh, but give him credit, tip your hat to those guys tonight. They did what they had to do in terms of protecting home court. And, uh, and they play well. Yeah, real quick, you, you mentioned Wilson. What was your game plan on him, and was there anything that worked particularly? Obviously, you mentioned the two points, but. Well, it was by committee. I mean, no one guy's going to shut this guy out who's having a, having a terrific year this year. Um, you know, he's you know, an all-league performer right now to this point right now. But, but we, were, we were really trying to limit his touches and then make him work on the other end as well. It's what you have to do with guys that really score the ball at a high clip. You got to make them work on both ends of the floor. You can't just let those guys come in and have a great offensive night and not have to work on the defensive side of the ball. I thought we did that. He got in foul trouble a little bit, and uh, um, but the supporting cast again came in and played well. And uh, uh, again, they were challenged by the Hall of Fame coach to to do that, and they, they responded well. Thanks, all. Appreciate it.